The real car market crash isn't the fact that these car dealers can't sell all of their trucks or all of their SUVs or we're seeing prices go up, we're seeing prices go down. We know those are all responses to the real car market crash and the situation that a lot of buyers are finding themselves in having to spend their hard-earned dollars and beyond the cost of living crisis is forcing people to spend a lot of their hard-earned dollars and savings to get out of hawk. Edmonds came up with statistics and realized that 25% of car owners today looking to trade in their vehicles are underwater. In other words, negative equity. How do you get out of negative equity? A lot of people simply can't. They either continue to lose money, take out of their savings, spend extra, take a second job to actually pay for that vehicle, or try to roll over a lot of their negative equity into their next new purchase if they're trying a trade in. Why would they be trading in? Well, in 2024, we peel this back two or three years, which is your typical trade in period if you're talking about lease or finance in a usually a two or three year time frame is when people start to trade their vehicles in because they're running out of warranty. And how can we possibly be in such a bad situation? Well, vehicles like this were so very expensive. And we know Rubicons were very popular for a while. They've lost some popularity strictly because of the pricing. Here we have a Rubicon. Obviously with all the blue decals, we have the blue hooks. That means this is a hybrid, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And it's a Rubicon Wrangler x4 by e whole pile of options right here as you can see there's a lot going on here but it's eighty five thousand six hundred fifty five dollars but it's not just jeeps how about a lot of these vehicles we know stellantis has had trouble selling a lot of vehicles lately as well as they're in dire straits financially because they're not putting down the sales numbers right here we have clearly a laramie ram it's a beautiful vehicle i mean who doesn't want a vehicle it's got nice rims on it definitely painted handles fold away mirror and even more importantly it's got the turbo cummins diesel it's a 2500 hd but unfortunately this vehicle i just looked at the sticker we're talking 115 thousand dollars for that vehicle in canadian funds it is too much money but it doesn't begin and end there it doesn't matter whether you're looking at jeeps rams or you're looking at any any other manufacturer a lot of these vehicles were going for far too much money their shortages back in 2021 22 drove manufacturers to sell higher profit margin vehicles vehicles where they have more features more upscale so they were able to maximize their profit margins and people were getting on the wagon people wanted a new vehicle and they were willing to pay whatever it took because they were competing with the next person right behind them if they didn't want to buy it that guy did a major reason why negative equity hit so hard here this year is because used car sales started to slide. And while it's great for a buyer of used vehicles, when you go to trade in your vehicle and you've had it for two or three years, and if the used car market is slumping, what do you think that does for your trade-in? So people were going in in a position where they overpaid for their vehicles brand new, and now we're in a slumped used car market two years later, and they're having to almost give their vehicle away. So depreciation really took a toll. And would you believe it? the average person that has negative equity on their trade-in is owing at least $6,000 on their vehicle. In other words, they bought this two years ago and now they're going to trade it in. And when the dealer looks at the value of the vehicle versus what they owe on the loan, they actually owe an additional $6,000 above the value of that vehicle. They've lost money and depreciation hurts them real bad. But on top of that, electric vehicles are even worse. It's no secret buying a brand new electric vehicle always seemed to resonate more than buying a secondhand one and we know Hertz was dumping them they were flooding the market and people are realizing range anxiety and some of the challenges in owning electric vehicles means that either you want them brand new or a lot of used vehicles nobody really wants them they want an affordable cost-effective ICE vehicle and electric vehicles take a real suffering a real beating on the used car market and as a result the average electric vehicle when trading in that happens to be into a negative equity equity situation is a much higher number than the ICE vehicles and EVs are about $10,000 and change underwater. Like being buried under that water situation there, many people are finding themselves owing more than the vehicle's worth and that now is pushing people either to do some very desperate things, especially in the cost of living crisis where people are struggling to pay for food, struggling to pay for rent and housing. We see all of that. We also see lending rates don't seem to be changing. Inflation is hovering. Unemployment is up and down. And now with this transition to pure EVs and some of these manufacturers were getting mixed signals. Some EV advocates saying, yeah, things are 
rosy when we're growing, and yet GM and Ford are all retracting and scaling back on the output of the production of some of their electric vehicles. So some people would argue, and Edmonds displayed also back in 2021, the amount of people that were in negative equity with their car loans was even higher than it is today, and at about 31.9% meant that it was even a more bleak situation, or was it? It actually really wasn't. It's just, it's much, much more impactful today because back in 2021, we know interest rates were very low. Bank of Canada, the Reserve and US, we saw interest rates that were much lower and much closer to zero. Well, it's never really zero, 1.9, 1%. 2% rates were quite low. So the impact of being in a negative equity situation and having to buy out your, the remainder of your loan was le much less impactful than it is today, where now we're dealing with a brand new car rate of seven, 7.3, seven and a half percent and slightly used, you could be paying as much as 10 or 11%, even for prime buyers. And Edmunds confirms what I've been telling you guys all along. I've got my old 2003 Ram and look, just by doing a few simple things, keep up on the maintenance, fix the brakes when they're gone, do your oil services. Look, I even gave it a new lease on life. I even put some new fender flares on there to give it a new fresh look that makes it look a little more premium. And I have my old truck, it looks great. But instead, everybody wants these new trucks because they have the latest, shiniest paint jobs and the newest technology. And that's what got people in so much trouble in the last couple of years. And moreover, Edmund's statistics are showing exactly how I lived my life. And, and the longer you keep your vehicle on the road and serviceable, the more money yet you keep in your pocket, right like that. Because what we're seeing now, people are trying to minimize the amount of impact that negative equity is having on their bank accounts. So they're keeping their vehicles about 3.7 years as opposed to 3.4 years, same time last year, and, and 3.2 years of age the year before. And the problem is people got all caught up in the shiny new technology and the new vehicles, and they just wanted to get something new. I mean, look right here. We talk about a Jeep Wrangler. These are one of the biggest culprits, Jeep, Ram, Stellantis, Chrysler, and we're seeing lots of heartache coming from there department now they can't sell vehicles and they're even looking at stripping down and, and dumping a lot of their product line that aren't selling vehicles have you even heard Stellantis is even considering selling off Maserati because it's one of their biggest losers but here we have a Wrangler four-door sport s 4x4 and right there sixty six thousand dollars and it's likely gonna sit there for a while. I've seen this, I've been talking about this particular Jeep for a while. We've seen it there for quite some time. It's clearly not selling. People aren't buying it because they're finally caught up and they're broke. People are finished. Cost of living crisis is eating people up and it's eating their savings and people are simply struggling with the day-to-day -day cost of living. What's more worrisome is with this aggressive trend of increased prices, brutal negative equity, buyers simply don't seem to be getting it. They're spending all their hard-earned dollars and exceeding their monthly income. That's right, $105,000 is your average salary in your American household. And based on those numbers, they shouldn't even be considering buying a vehicle with a car loan in excess of five or $600 a month. But yet, the average has gone up to $740 a month for the average new car loan. I mean, beautiful vehicles like this, beautiful brand new Grand Cherokee. Love the way it looks, for sure, and everybody does. That's what gets you sucked in. But this vehicle here is going for $69,000. $500 right there. Sure, it's a lot of options. Altitude 4x4. Four by, four by it's not even that low. This is sort of a mid-spec unit. Has nice plastic detail there. This is clearly a mid-spec vehicle, and yet people are spending $70,000 or more, $80,000. Out the door, you're probably closer to 75, 80 grand for this vehicle. That puts you in harm's territory, and people don't have the money truly to afford it. They're actually stretching their monthly cost of living to pay for that shiny new vehicle. And would you believe, for the first time, we've seen 17.8% of the car loans out there are in excess of $1,000 a month. So buyers are often wondering, how do I avoid negative equity? Well, keep your car longer, maintain it, look after it. Because once you own a vehicle for six or seven or eight years, the whole idea of negative equity usually disappears on its own. The other idea is buy yourself good quality, reputable vehicles. If you're one that needs to flip vehicles regularly, Toyotas, Hondas, Lexus vehicles typically hold their value better because of the quality, the reliability. People are okay in buying them used and that drives those prices up. So if you're selling one off used or trading it in, you're likely going to hold a better value and likely therefore negative equity will be less of an issue. So lower quality vehicles generally are gonna go bye-bye. EVs, bye-bye. Vehicles that tend to be, have a perception of being more throwaway. But the sad part is a lot of people just aren't hearing the message and they continue to go out and buy their expensive vehicles 
on a shoestring budget. Have you ever heard the term, trying to drink champagne on a beer budget? Well, that's applying to a lot of people exceeding their monthly allowable based on their average household income. They're out there overextending themselves, stretching themselves beyond. A lot of times kids have to do without. They're not eating, they're skipping meals. And a lot of times people are just defaulting at the end of the day because in fact, yes, the repo crisis is real. It's happening, you wanna hear all about it. And as well, people like that, they're literally just walking away from their loans, their cars and other debt. I can't believe it, things are getting off the rails. Hope to see each and every one of you in the next one. We'll see you real soon, bye-bye.